What is up, everybody? This is Ibrick Cards, and welcome back to week three of King of FanDuel. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about my lineups for this coming week. We're going to talk about my other contests and who won last week. Enjoy the bad intro. Do, 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 do. Who's the king of fan duel? So as I said, we're going to talk about last week. Now last week, our winner was New Guy Took My MOJ, who honestly could have been our winner the week before. I honestly don't recall. Now this week, the winner scored 30 points less than in week one. Now these opening weeks are really dicey, really confusing, and sometimes you just don't know what's going to happen. For example, Ryan Fitzpatrick going off last year. Just craziness with the Fitz magic. Now, our winner this week got 128 points, 68 points. Doesn't seem like a lot unless you're me in last place again, still not getting your tablecloth back, still having the loser's bottle of water, who only got 88.8. Five, six points. Now I thought that my lineup wasn't half bad, but it did run into some unfortunate problems. So our winner had Lamar Jackson as a quarterback. I had Tom Brady. Lamar played Arizona at home and he did a lot better. Eckler, he had Ingram, Cooper, Will Fuller, Josh Gordon, Darren Waller as his tight end, Hawkinson, and of course the New England Patriots defense. Take away those 37 points and put in the Giants like I had, and he has 35 less points. The point difference between him and I is roughly 40. So, not a large margin of victory per se. He won by 12 points between him and second place, and the point value between second and third was only three. He had a decent lineup, but not the best we've ever seen in the series so far. Tom Brady got me 25 points. He played at Miami with 264 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, and one rushing yard, getting me 0.1 point on that rushing yard. I also had Sonny Michel, who did some decent things this week, 85 yards running. He did fumble and lose it, unfortunately, and that cost me two points. Not that it really mattered. I had Josh Jacobs as my running back, Julian Edelman as a wide receiver, and Josh Norman, or sorry, Josh Gordon, who only had two receptions for 20 yards. That really hurt my team. I had Ingram as a tight end. I had Kamara as a very expensive flex running back who only had 45 yards running and 15 yards through the air. And then I did go cheap on my defense, as I typically do, to get the Giants defense, who only got me two points because they played the Bills and they lost which is very embarrassing. And I got three sacks and allowed between 28 and 34 points. We're putting this week behind us again. Congratulations to our winner once again, who is new guy, took my MOJ. Very impressive week two, and we're going to move on to week three. So during week three, I have a lineup I think a lot of people are going to kind of take tidbits off of. Week three, I have Dak Prescott as my quarterback because he is at home against Miami. Every team who has come up and played Miami has killed them, just brutally murdered. Even Mika Fitzpatrick once away, and several other players are asking their agents for trades. I think they've been outscored by over 100 points at this point, which is absolutely just terrible. Do we have another team that can go 0-16? I absolutely believe we do. And I would go even further to say they're even worse than the Browns, who went 0-16 two years ago, I think. So we've got Dak, who lines up with Elliott, Cobb, and Cooper right now as I have four players from the Cowboys on my team. This only works well if the Cowboys do really well and get a lot of offense. I'm trusting their defense to do really well, but I did not choose their defense. My other running back I have is Dalvin Cook. Dalvin's coming off of a couple good games. They're playing Oakland at home. So that's kind of a home field advantage. I think that's going to help. And then I have Austin Hooper and Calvin Ridley as my two uh, wide receiver and tight end kind of duo. And I think they'll do really well against Indianapolis, even though it's at Indianapolis. Two decently cheap players that kind of line up right behind Julio Jones. Our other flex running back, unfortunately, the best we could afford for a starter was Frank Gore, who plays for Buffalo. But they're at home against Cincinnati, who hasn't been doing that well either. And then we have Seattle's defense against New Orleans. New Orleans still has, you know, Michael Thomas. They still have Alvin Kamara. They still have Traquan Smith. And they still have Ted Jr. 
but they don't have a starting quarterback in the fact that Drew Brees has been hurt, just like Ben Roethlisberger, who's out for the season. Brees is only out four to six weeks, so he will be back, kind of like in the same time frame that Tyreek Hill will be back for my Chiefs. Uh, but I do have Seattle's defense at home against New Orleans in a game that could very well be a shootout with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. That's kind of all I really have to say. I currently have a contest that was between Monday and Thursday night that spans two games. We had the Browns and Jets game, and then we have the Titans playing the Jaguars tomorrow. Jalen Ramsey wants a trade. I feel like that's going to hurt team morale a little bit, and rumor has it the Chiefs won it. But I honestly don't want a player who's going to come in and cost us a lot of draft picks, a lot of money, when Mahomes is going to get paid next year. And I see players like Sammy Watkins unfortunately not getting signed because we have players such as McCall Hardman or other rookies who can come in that are fast, that we want to keep more, and sign to a cheaper deal. So I'm thinking this game's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, I'm not sure what to think of Gardner Minshew. As we all know, uh, the Jaguar starting quarterback broke his collarbone week one and will be out for maybe roughly half the season. So, a backup rookie quarterback, I think he was like a sixth round pick. I could be way off here, fourth or sixth or something like that. Late round pick for a quarterback anyway. Um, coming up against a team with Mariota, Derrick Henry, and players like that. It will be very interesting. I'm like 15 points off of winning that, but chances are the players and the people who are winning now have put all the players from the Browns and Jets game on their team. So, I still have good players like... Delaney Walker for, I believe, my tight end and Derrick Henry as my running back, who will be a very popular choice. I did not choose Bell, so if Delaney Walker and um, Derrick Henry, specifically Derrick Henry, can outperform Levy on Bell, that will help me a lot. Not sure who to say will win, uh, as I will be editing this probably tonight. It's Wednesday night. So if I had to guess, and I could be wrong, let's say the Titans. Even though it's not a home game for the Titans, they have more starters, their team seems healthier, their team seems like they enjoy being there more than the Jaguars players. Who knows? I don't know. I don't get in fights on sidelines with coaches, but that's just me. We're going into week three this Sunday, guys. The Chiefs play the Ravens at home. This would be a good, tough game. If I wasn't a Chiefs or a Ravens fan, it would probably be a game I would want to watch. Otherwise, I will always root for my Chiefs. I think we can win it, but our defense has to show up. We cannot have a shootout like we had last year at the end of the game. That is all for me, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our guys who participate in the league. Fingers crossed we do not get last place this coming week. I may toy with the lineup, and if I do, I'll let you guys know next week when we talk about it. For now, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Hopefully... We get our blanket back next week, and our loser water is gone, and I will talk to you all later.